And, and uh, Chair Kelly, as long as we've got you up there, we've got another bill on the calendar uh, that uh, was held over from uh, the last meeting. Uh, that is uh, House Fell 1495, authored by Representative Green. And as long as we've got you here, I just wanted to uh, ask you, I understand I was missing at the last meeting, there was some question about whether the funding for the highway patrol, the four and a half million dollars, was a one-time amount or whether it was supposed to be put into the base. And as long as we've got you here, Chair Kelly, I guess what was the intention as it came out of transportation? Uh, Mr. Chair and members, when we had our discussion on transportation, we were all viewing it as a one-time um, one -time commitment, and, and, and that's the way our, our committee approved it. Uh, later, we found out from, a, from the language that it actually put it into the base. So uh, I can tell you from my opinion in our committee is that we were under the understanding that it was a one-time um, uh, apportionment. Okay, thank you, Chair Kelly. I know we're gonna take up that uh, bill later. I'm not sure. Uh, Oh, Representative Green is here. All right. Well, if that's the case, Representative Green, why don't you come forward and we'll take your bill. And then as long as we've got Chair Kelly here, if you can stay, Chair Kelly, if there's any other questions about it, then um, we can have you both here to answer it. Okay, and though, so at this point, I'll make a motion that uh, that uh, the vote by which House File 1495 was referred to the General Register be reconsidered. All in favor of reconsidering the vote on House File 1495 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. House File 1495 shall be reconsidered. And uh, members, uh, there is a Amendment, the 1495A1 amendment, uh, but Representative Carlson. I'm trying to remember, Mr. Chairman, was this referred back uh, from the floor? Uh, Representative Carlson, no, I never signed the report you to send it to the, the floor. Okay, that, that's where I said it, okay. Right, yeah, no, I, you know, I wasn't here for the last meeting. The uh, speaker had uh, told me I needed to meet with him, and then I kind of heard after the fact that there was some discussion about uh, whether it should have been one-time funding or permanent funding, and so I just decided to not sign the report so we could get to the bottom of it at this next meeting. Mr. Chair, that's what I was wondering, because we would have had to have had a, re -re a referral back from the floor if you'd signed, but if right, that's right. the case, we're all right. Okay. Um, uh, Representative Green, the author of House File 1495, uh, I want to recognize you and welcome you to the committee. Uh, this is your bill, and I guess Representative Green, uh, the bill is, and the, at the moment, uh, as it was when it came to the committee with uh, permanent funding, uh, do you want to make any kind of a statement on the bill? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Kelly is right, uh, and and when the when the bill did come here, I assumed that it had been uh, amended to be one-time funding. When I first proposed it, it was it was for ongoing funding, and then there was some discussion, and and, and when we got it through the transportation committee, it it did. Uh, you know, I was under the impression it was one-time funding. When it came here, I don't know how the language got the way that it was, but I was glad to accept it because I do think that we're gonna come back and visit this every year. Uh, but um, if, if the bill before you is what the, the committee wants, then that's what I'll bring forward. Okay. Uh, Representative Carlson. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, Representative Green, uh, the comment uh, every year, it's my understanding that the uh, Academy is not convened every year, but it is convened basically on a needs basis when they have uh, enough applicants or the need for enough troopers to warrant a uh, class, and I have no idea what those numbers are, but uh, it's uh, my understanding it's not necessarily every year, but maybe the department or Mr. Kelly could comment, or, or you, Mr. Green, if, or Representative Green, if you know. Mr. Chair, Green. Mr. Chair and Representative Carlson, uh, the Colonel Langer from the state uh, troopers is here and I'm sure he'd be willing to come down and answer that question for you. Um, please, Mr. Chairman, that does kind of go to the care core then of one time or permanent if, um, sure. if it's uh, convened every year versus uh, on a needs basis whenever you have the need to have a class. But Mr. Chair? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, never mind. I was wondering if you were hogging all the... Uh, 
treats there, but I see. This is the first one I've gotten represented a Mahoney. <laughs> <laughs> you should pass something to represent Albright, though. They're coming your way, Representative Mahoney. <laughs> Sir, welcome to the committee. Can you state your name for the record? Mr. Chair, my name is Matt Langer, and I'm the Chief of the State Patrol. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Langer, uh, can you, uh, I guess, enlighten us a little bit as to the history of the appropriation for the academies, if they've been uh, uh, not every year in the past, or what the frequency has been? I think that's the question Representative Carlson was asking. Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Carlson and members of the committee, uh, we try to have a, an academy every year. It doesn't always happen that way. In my experience, there's a need for an academy every year. Uh, what we'd like to do to maximize the efficiency of having an academy is to plan for an academy every year and have it be a, of a more consistent size. Uh, for instance, for us, it's a lot easier and we think more streamlined and efficient to run an academy of about 30 or 35 cadets than to have perhaps 57, which is what we have right now. So if we miss an academy year, which we've done I think three times in about the last 12 years, uh, what that does is it kicks the can down the road for us and just requires us to have a bigger academy two years later than to have one every year because with an agency of about 600 sworn troopers, there's, there's a constant flow of attrition due to retirements and other reasons. Uh, Representative Aguinius. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> the governor has uh, set some goals for uh, more people of color and more women, and I know State Patrol is pretty far behind. Uh, is this going to help having this academy uh, help with that? Mr. Langer. Uh, Mr. Chair and Representative Wiginius, it's this is consistent with our push to do everything, everything we can to attract the, the best and brightest candidates to include people of color and to include women into our ranks. Right now we have about 10% of our workforce, uh, that being troopers who are female, uh, we think we can do better and I'd like to do better than that. One of the challenges for us with recruitment, uh, no matter what race or gender we're talking about is our inability in recent years to be able to say we're having an academy. So we can do the best recruitment uh, known uh, on the planet uh, to be out there recruiting and finding these candidates, but if we don't say we're <coughs> hiring in 2017, uh, it's no surprise that those candidates find jobs elsewhere and we watch them go to other agencies, which is difficult for us. So to answer your question bluntly, to have uh, rolling academy funding for the foreseeable future allows us to be more methodical in our recruitment approach and that will help in all facets of recruitment, including diversity recruitment. Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Albright. Mr. Chair, I would move the A1 amendment. Uh, Representative Albright moves the A1 amendment, which is uh, Representative Albright, can you describe the amendment? Mr. Chair, on uh, page one, line seven, what that does to the bill is it actually uh, refines the bill to be a one-time appropriation for the amount said in the bill, and I believe that is in concurrence with what we've heard from Chair Kelly as well as from Representative Green. Okay, uh, discussion to the A1 amendment of Representative Cornish. Well, I approve, uh, I guess, of what we're doing here nationally. I would rather have ongoing funding, but maybe a solution would be to uh, have the patrol do a good job of projecting a, the, a couple of years ahead of time, and we can give them enough money to go for two years of academy. And they would still have to come back when they run out for another one and see us again instead of ongoing, but we could fund it so they could be uh, uh, have some stability so they know they're going to have one every year So, in the future. Representative Guinness. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. We just heard uh, that it would be um, more efficient to have academies each year, but we also heard that it would be um, helpful in recruiting people of color and helpful in recruiting women, and we're short in both. And so is it the intention of this amendment to put a roadblock for that kind of recruiting? Well, uh, Representative Albright. Mr. Chair and Representative Alginius, in no way, shape, or form uh, would this, in my opinion, be an impediment. Uh, but I think that from a precedent standpoint in the past, uh, the Academy has come back to us with a request based upon the needs uh, as such. And I think that what we're doing with this amendment is just uh, agreeing with the history that has uh, gone on in the past. We certainly, uh, 
uh, respect to work that the tr uh, state troopers do, and in no way does it uh, take away from that or the desire to uh, uh, in invite and, and train those that are uh, people of color or minorities to be a part of, part of that. Uh, so, uh, just for the record, just to make sure that you're clear on that. For Representative Wiginius. I understand there's no desire, but from the testimony, that is the outcome. Uh, sorry, Mr. Langer. Yeah. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, if I can make one point, and it, Representative Green can correct me if I'm wrong, but what this language would do is provide funding for an academy. We would still have to justify and have the funds within our regular trunk highway appropriation to fund those new hires. So uh, it may be, maybe there's a little point of confusion there, but this doesn't actually fund additional troopers on an ongoing basis, it gives us the capital necessary to host an academy and whether we have the funds available to carry 20 in that academy or 30 or 40 is dependent upon the attrition rate that we see with troopers leaving the agency. Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Chief Langer. Uh, just one quick question. Is, is the cost of one academy 4.5 million? Mr. Langer. Mr. Chair, Representative Erdahl, that's what we know based on history, but again, some of it fluctuates depending on the size. And our goal as an agency has been always to run, if we can run a stable academy size and we can kind of predict accurately the uh, succession rate of troopers, that helps us to keep our station, stabilized, station staffing stabilized, which is good for our agency, but most importantly, we believe it to be very good for our state. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Chief Langer. So, how, how long does an, an academy session last? Chief Langer. Mr. Chair, Representative Erdahl, it's a good question. Uh, the academy itself is 16 weeks currently. We're likely to go to 17 weeks um, next year so we can fulfill some additional training requirements that we believe are important. But the actual training is 16 weeks. Of course, before the academy, there's a lengthy background, written test, physical test, psychological test, medical test, and then prior, or I'm sorry, at the end of 16 weeks of the residential academy, then there's 12 weeks of field training. And this bill with the $4.5 million would help offset uh, the cost for all of those functions. Thank you. Representative Carlson. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Langley, the uh, question of training uh, when you say 16 to 17 weeks uh, brings to mind uh, a discussion actually we had uh, a few years ago with uh, the now Hennepin County Sheriff. He was on this uh, committee. And what kind of credit do you give for a police officer that's uh, been trained and has experience, let's say, that's gone through the program at Hennepin Technical College? You know, we have a brand new training facility up there, state of the art. So if you've gone through that training, do you still have to go through the full 16 or 17 weeks, or do you give credit uh, for that experience, either on the job or, in that case, uh, at a college? Chief Langer. Mr. Chair and Representative Carlson, we, we don't give credit. Uh, every cadet that comes into the academy is there for 16 weeks. Uh, we've done in the past at least twice, I think, uh, a rather expedited academy where we hire only incumbent officers. Um, I think that's worked okay. I don't think it's been seen as a raving success for us for a few different reasons, but our academy process for 16 weeks is very structured. It's very methodical, and we believe it to be very important for the specialized nature of the work that we do. We build upon the skills that, that other people might gain in other agencies and what they get through skills training, uh, but it'd be difficult for us to insert someone and have them shave off two or three weeks out of that academy. Uh, that would be tough for us. About Historically, about half the applicants coming to us have previous experience. The last couple academies, it's been a little bit uh, lower than half, I think about 30%. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't want to belabor that point, but I, I find it rather interesting because uh, when we talk about a state institution like uh, Hennepin Tech, and we have other Alexandria and other training facilities, we're in a sense paying for it twice then. Um, you know, whatever their experience level would be at uh, one of those other facilities, because uh, the state does cover part of the cost. The student, of course, pays tuition. I assume there's no cost to the trainee that goes through the academy. Um, but um, at any rate, I'll just stop there. But we 
we are in a sense paying for it twice at some level I don't know how the training I guess without seeing the curriculum or something compares between the Academy and and a program let's say at Alexandria Tech that's a very large one up at Alexandria um, and uh, as far as I know highly thought of and I think the same is true with the one at uh, Hennepin Tech in Brooklyn Park but I'll stop there mr. chairman okay um, Representative Liebling, is your question to the A1 amendment? Yeah. All right, Representative Liebling. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, so uh, it's kind of two parts. I mean, first of all, I um, uh, I think that the language of the bill, just this short sentence, is a little bit confusing in that it talks about additional state patrol troopers. And as I'm listening to the conversation here, you know, this is for the academy, and I don't know, I understand they're additional in that they're new, but I understood from Chief Langley that they're being replaced. So, you know, the sense, if I'm understanding right now what we're talking about, it's that this is needed for the academy on an ongoing basis every year, according to his testimony, to just simply keep up with the number of troopers that we need to have in the state that are where the ongoing funding is actually in another bucket of funding. So um, I'm really, I guess I'd like to ask the question then, uh, why we're not, why we don't want to have this be ongoing. It seems like the testimony is very clear that the need is ongoing, that there's some certainty that's needed, that the funding would be there every single year, and so given that, I'm not really understanding why the amendment is, uh, um, why Representative Albright, you want to limit this to one time and make them come back and do this again. Um, but I, I do think the language of the bill confuses the issue a bit. If we're really just talking about an academy that's recurring, every that we need it every year to replace troopers who leave for whatever reason and keep our full complement of troopers in the state, we need to do this every year. Why would we go to the one-time appropriation? Well, and maybe what I can do, Representative Liebling, I'm not sure if you were here when the conversation started, but just for the history, uh, my understanding is I wasn't here for the last meeting and I guess there was some confusion when the bill came before the committee about whether it was one-time funding or permanent funding. We've heard that the intention was when it came out of transportation that it was supposed to be for one-time funding, but apparently it was drafted in such a way that it was permanent. And so we earlier heard Chair Kelly of the Transportation Committee say that it had been the uh, will of the Transportation Committee that it be one time and so Representative Albright's amendment now is to try to conform it back to what uh, he understand understood was the will of the committee. But maybe what I can do is to have Chair Kelly come forward and I guess they had a debate about this in the Transportation Committee I assume and uh, perhaps he can clarify what the committee's feeling was on why they wanted it to be one time. Chair Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members. I guess the way I would look at this is, is the request came came to us for one time one time funding, and when we had the discussion, uh, that's what it was. That's what it, the discussion was. That's what the uh, conversation was. That's what the presentation was. I guess to me, if it was for ongoing funding, uh, we're talking about two different, completely different scenarios there. Now, now if we have an ongoing funding, I would suggest that the cost would be less. Uh, that there would be less um, recruit to to train um, if, if we wanted ongoing funding I would I would suggest that that would be a different bill and it would be different format it would be a different request so here we're, we're historically we're looking at what has been done historically historically they've come to us when they want funding for the the trooper Academy with the numbers that they have and that's where I I feel that's where the uh, request had been made that's where the how the presentation came to us and so that's that's how we acted mm -hmm. thank you mr. chair that's very helpful uh, Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to thank Representative Albright for bringing this clarifying language. Uh, I think it is refreshing that we are seeing a legislature that's coming forward and providing the type of oversight, uh, the type of uh, metering, if you will, of the people's money uh, as we evaluate these programs going forward, rather than just turning the reins over to a branch or a, a segment of government. Uh, no matter how good, trusted, and respected that segment of government is, it's our job as the legislature, it's our job as 
these uh, elected people of the state of Minnesota to look after their money, to look after the programs that they pay for, and to make certain that we are getting the return on the investment as we understood when we made those decisions. Representative Albright, your amendment's right on dead center. Thank you. See no further discussion. All in favor of the A1 amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion prevails. The A1 amendment is adopted. Uh, members, discussion to the bill as amended. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, I'll renew my motion then or make the motion that House File 1495 as amended be referred to the General Register. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. House file 1495 uh, a, with the A1 amendment is referred to the General Register. Thank you, thank, Mr. Chair and committee thank, members. Thank you, Representative Green uh, and, uh, and Chair Kelly uh, for working us through this.